Hi everybody! I've been wanting to build a PC on the channel for some time now that hasn't had to do with my own personal build. And while that is finally ready to be completed as the last parts have arrived in the mail, I still have a lot of prep work to do and other videos to make before I can even get to it. In the meantime, let's have some fun and build this PC right here. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. For this build, I wanted to stay under $750 before taxes and any shipping was calculated. And I achieved that goal by about two bucks. I bought most of the parts as they became available and were on sale, and if I were to adjust some of the current prices on components, such as for the motherboard or power supply, I could actually save an additional $40 to $60, thus lowering the total. Unfortunately, other part prices like the SSD have increased, so for the sake of this video, I'll just leave the prices at what I paid. If you're interested in any of the components I cover, I'll be leaving links in the description down below. Driving this PC is AMD's Ryzen 3100. It's a great little price performance CPU, especially if you can find it at the $99 MSRP. Unfortunately, I was unable to do this and bought it via eBay for around $128. It's a 4-core 8-thread CPU that will work well with the graphics card I'm using for this build. Alternatively, if you can find the 3300X or Unicorn CPU as I call it for around the same price I paid for this 3100, then I highly recommend going with that as all four cores are on one CCX which reduces latency and improves in performance. If you have a bit more of a CPU budget and can spend upwards of $199, then go for the Ryzen 5 3600 as you'll net two more cores and four more threads. Next is the motherboard, and for this part I chose the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4 AC. I purchased this for $124.99, but at the time of filming I found it new for $89.99. It's a lower tier B550 board in terms of power delivery and I.O., but it has enough features to make any budget builder happy, including six USB ports on the back, an M.2 slot where you can install a PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive, and up to four SATA ports. Overall, the price to performance of this motherboard is bang on, and I can't argue with that current low price. Don't need Wi-Fi? The non-AC version can be bought new for as little as $79.99, saving you even more money. If you want to spend a bit more for more features, then I recommend the MSI B550A Pro motherboard. It has USB Type-C ports for the front and back, a more robust power delivery, and a second M.2 slot. RAM prices have been fluctuating all year, mostly increasing in price. While I could easily get a 16GB DDR4-3200 kit for 50 bucks in late December 2020, that's just not the case anymore. 70, 80, and even 90 dollars are more common prices and increase that even more if you want RGB. So when I saw this DDR4 3200 kit from Oloy for 76 bucks, I knew I had to try it. They make decent performing RAM at good prices and while the timings aren't always the best, the price is just right. Because I knew I wouldn't have any lighting in this build, I felt this RGB RAM kit would add a nice touch. As an alternative, I highly recommend Crucial Ballistics RAM. You can find a 3600 CL16 non-RGB kit, usually for around $86 to $90. To keep costs down, my storage solutions are not fancy at all. I'm using a 256GB Team Group GX2 2.5-inch SATA 3 SSD for the boot drive and a Seagate Barracuda 2TB 7200RPM platter drive. I've used both these drives before in builds and have been very happy with the experience. The GX2 is fast and it has enough room for both the OS and some key programs. The bulk of the games, other programs, and documents will live on the Barracuda, another quality hard drive and an affordable price. I recently bought the Fantex P300A as Newegg was offering a $10 rebate, lowering this $59.99 case down to $49.99. At either price, it's a hell of a case that has more features for the price than almost any other budget case I've looked at recently. It's compact, stylish, has good airflow, and while there's no USB Type-C port at the front, that's not a problem since this motherboard doesn't have one either. Also, the single fan that comes with it is even PWM, which is great. Speaking of fans, there's only one included with the P300A, so I'll be adding two Arctic P12 PWM PST fans at the front as intakes. They're quiet and push a lot of air. I've used them in previous builds as well, and I'm very happy with their performance. You can buy five packs of these for relatively cheap, which comes in handy if you plan on building several computers or think you might need some more fans in the future. Originally, I was going to use the ASUS Tough Gaming 450W 80 Plus Bronze PSU I got bundled with the graphics card for this build, an ASUS Dual GTX 1650, a non-super version. The Tough PSU retails for $79.99, but I was able to get $20 back with a mail-in rebate. After taxes and shipping, remember the rebate applies to the cost after the fact, the total cost for this PSU was $78 and change, which is still way too much. Because I'm selling this PC later on, I cannot in good conscience include this PSU. It costs too much for the wattage you're getting, and if the person who buys the PC wants to upgrade their GPU and or CPU down the road, this PSU just won't cut it. 
Instead, I'll be using this EVGA 600 watt 80 plus bronze PSU. I bought this in April for around $4.99, and as of this recording, you can currently buy it for $39.99, which is a heck of a deal. Additionally, it has enough wattage that you can easily add an RTX 3060 should you get a chance to upgrade. While I am the one who clicked add to cart, I cannot help but be angry at Newegg for constantly bundling parts no one wants or that are too expensive with the GPUs that they're selling. The GPU market has not improved or hasn't improved enough, so we're still stuck with these horrible deals. I'm also mad at ASUS for th even thinking this PSU is worth $79.99 or even $59.99. No, this tough PSU should be firmly priced around $35 to $39 bucks, considering its wattage, its non-modularity, and its 80 plus bronze rating. Enough of me being on my soapbox though, let's talk about the graphics card. The final piece of this budget PC is the graphics card, of course. As previously mentioned, I'll be using the Asus Dual GTX 1650. It has 4GB of GDDR5 memory, and according to my research, it outperforms the 1050 Ti by around 26% on average for several games. It doesn't even require supplemental power from the PSU. Don't expect to play games on high settings at 4K or even 1440p with this GPU. Lower your expectations and hope you can get great frames at 1080p on medium or high settings. Of course, to find out how well this GPU handles games, I'll have to run some benchmarks which will be presented later on in this video. After subtracting the overpriced PSU from the bundle, Newegg sold this GPU to me for $214.99, which is about a $49 markup over the original price of $165.99 I've seen this card go for. While it's not too bad, it's not great either. I'm really tired of the current GPU landscape, as I'm sure all of you are as well. And those are all the parts for this PC build. What do you think? What tweaks would you make to either save more money altogether or get more bang for your buck? I've mentioned quite a few alternative parts that could help improve the build's performance, but considering the state of the PC market, at $750 before taxes and shipping of course, this is a pretty solid build, especially when comparing it to some pre-built PCs I've seen being sold on Amazon, eBay, and elsewhere. Alright, enough of me jibba let's get to building.
After seeing that final b-roll of the completed build, I bet some of you are wondering what's the deal with that different GPU? Well sometimes things just don't go your way no matter what you do to fix them. This was the case with the Asus GTX 1650 dual GPU I originally bought for this PC. While it worked just fine, the fans ran at a constant 100% and sounded like a screaming jet engine. I tried loads of solutions from uninstalling to reinstalling the drivers installing older drivers, redoing the thermal paste on the GPU, and even downloading MSI Afterburner to see if I could manually control the fans that way. Hint, I couldn't. Nothing seemed to work, and there was no way I was leaving that noisemaker installed. So I returned the GPU to Newegg, hoping for a replacement. Instead, I got a refund. The GPU market is so bad that even retailers don't have reserve stock to replace defective items. Rather than give up, I spent the next two weeks on eBay, hoping to score a used 1650 and also hoping the auction price wouldn't balloon out of control as well. In the end, I lucked out. Not only did I get an MSI GTX 1650 Ventus XSOC at an okay price with no shipping added, it ended up being a super version. All told, I spent about an additional 60 bucks for this GPU. But the way I look at it, I paid 100 to 150 less than what most 1650 supers are currently going for. GPU woes aside, building this PC was pretty straightforward and easy. The Fantex P300A is a pleasure to build in, and I like its unusual storage mounting solution from the front. Cable management wasn't difficult either. I only ended up using one cable tie and relied mostly on the cable channel and Velcro straps that were provided by the case. However, it did become a bit more difficult once I added the cable extensions. There was just so much stuff at the back of the case and in the basement that it wasn't very easy to reinstall the rear panel. I'm definitely looking forward to going over and building in the P360A and P400A cases which I intend to use for future builds. You'll definitely want to get subscribed so you don't miss out on those videos. Getting to, into the Phantom Gaming 4's BIOS and setting up the XMP for the RAM was fairly easy as well. However, since there is no simple mode for the BIOS, it may prove more challenging for those who don't regularly go into a BIOS. Temperatures and noise levels have also been pretty good. The CPU and GPU never got above 70 degrees Celsius while gaming, and when just browsing the internet, the PC is super quiet. The GPU also sips power, never going above 70 watts while gaming. Overall, if I ignore the Asus GPU issues, I'd say this was an easy and uneventful build. I had no hardware conflicts or driver issues, and I could easily update and download any utilities directly from ASRock or AMD's website. ASRock does have a slew of utilities, and these include a driver software updater and UEFI BIOS booter you'll use if you have Quick Boot enabled and spamming the delete key doesn't work to get you into the BIOS, and finally Polychrome, which is software used to control your RGB components. To be all honest, I'm not a fan of Polychrome. It takes forever to boot and it's pretty basic with limited settings. There are plenty of lighting presets, but the most basic function of adjusting speed is absent. If you want to set a custom color, you have to use a color wheel or slider bars, and instead I'd like to see CYMK, RGB, or even web color value entry fields available. Ultimately, Polychrome has a lot to be desired. 
Speaking of RGB and polychrome, the only real issue I had with this build was with the Oloy RAM lights not doing what I wanted them to do when I set colors within the software. I can set red, blue, or green just fine, but I cannot choose any color in between without one or two of the lights on each stick being incorrect. For instance, I wanted to set the RAM to purple to coordinate with the cable extensions, but for whatever reason the top lights of each stick remained blue. If I wanted to go white, some of the lights would stay a light blue. I really don't get it, and I'm unsure if I should blame the RAM, the software, or both. If any of you have a solution, please let me know in the comments below. Finally, some advice. If you're looking at the ASRock Phantom Gaming 4 AC motherboard for the Wi-Fi, go for the non-AC version instead and buy yourself an aftermarket solution M.2 module. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module in the Phantom Gaming 4 AC does not offer the latest Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards, so it's not as fast. So if you want faster wireless speeds, you'll definitely want a better module than what is included with this motherboard. Ultimately, I built this PC as a budget gamer. So how does it do? This PC can definitely play games at 1080p with medium to medium high settings, especially for more casual or esports type games. In the end, I was also able to test the Asus GPU before sending it in, so I'm going to go ahead and include those results as well as those for the MSI GPU. The games I tested are for CSGO, Rocket League, Fortnite, and the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. CSGO and Rocket League performed the best, with the latter just taking whatever the system could throw at it, and still performing well. Fortnite, however, never seemed to have good 1% or 0.1% lows. The average FPS was fine, but the lows were atrocious, leading to a lot of hitching and an unfun gaming experience. While I was able to raise the 1% lows after dialing in the settings, I wasn't able to increase the 0.1% lows that much. Shadow of the Tomb Raider performed adequately in terms of average FPS, so I definitely think you could play some AAA games at medium settings and have a good gaming experience. Overall, I think this PC build is a very viable option considering it's just under $800 price. While I did have to go the used market route for the GPU, everything else can be bought new. All the components worked, and the only issue I had was with the Oloy RAM lighting not working as I wanted to when trying to set a specific color within ASRock's Polychrome RGB software. In the end, I'm happy that you can still build a decent gaming or office PC for under $800 in 2021. That's it for me and this PC build. Thanks for watching, everybody. Share any questions or comments you have down below. Hit that like button if you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. Show your support for the channel by clicking subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification icon so you don't miss out on any future content. I'm Seth, and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.